Welcome to the Virtual Nature School. Here we are on day three of our inquiry. Wasn't it fabulous yesterday to meet the minister, to be able to talk about the amazing work that we've been doing as part of this wonderful Virtual Nature School. So today we're going to be exploring something interesting about ice. And you may have in the winter seen this happening. I want you to have a look at this film and we'll come back in just a minute and talk about what you might want to do about the power of ice to trap things. Enjoy. Welcome to session three of our inquiry around the exploration of ice. We've been working amazingly hard. And one of the things I wanted to share with you was a little bit of the thinking around how you actually learn. Because in this inquiry, we're going to be using all five of our senses. We're going to be using our mouths because we're going to be able to eat some of these lovely ice creations. We've been using our hands because we've been touching and holding and feeling the temperature of the ice. We've been using our ears because we've been listening to each other's ideas. We've been smelling and using our sense of smell to see what things smell like that we put into our eyes today. And we've been using our eyes to look at the changes and to understand how things have been altered by the process of freezing. But that's not all. You actually have another two senses. And this one is about understanding about how your whole body works. So using your arms and your legs, Pushing and pulling and moving yourself around the place is really important. The other one that you might have found quite interesting when we were talking about ice is that fact that you know where your body is. So that's called an inner vestibular balance. It's all about your ears and inside your ears are this piece of liquid and the liquid moves around inside your head, inside your ears. And it helps you then keep your sense of balance. So all of your seven senses are really important in this inquiry. So by the end, we're going to have created an ice cream parlor. Now in an ice cream parlor, we're going to have not only ice cream, if you want to make that, but you're going to be able to look at drinks. You're going to be able to create some games based on our slipping and sliding game that we did earlier. So let's look forward into the talking tub. And today what we're going to do is look at the idea of trapping things inside the ice. Now, I've done a focus on things that you might be able to eat. You can trap anything inside ice. So look at this big block of ice. And can you see all those little bubbles, those circles? They're bubbles of air that have got trapped inside the ice as it got colder and colder. Here are some bubbles of ice trapped inside a lake. So this has happened in the winter time when it was very, very cold. But when you look very closely at these circles, you can see what was happening there is that the air was coming up from the bottom of the lake and got trapped so it couldn't escape. Now we can use that idea as part of our experiment and you might enjoy that when you start to look at the bicarbonate of soda that I've talked about later on. We could put these inside ice. So these are raspberries and they grow on tall bushes. We could put some raspberries inside some ice and see how they taste. We could look at these. These are strawberries and these are on strawberry plants and we might have them in our garden, but we can also grow them in a window box or we could go to a farm to pick them or we could go to a supermarket to buy them. Look at this, there's a strawberry trapped inside an ice cube. We can put other things inside our ice tray. So these are herbs, and which means they are plants that we can eat. These are flowers and some flowers you can eat and some flowers you cannot. So you have to be very careful that you're working with a grown up who understands which ones we can eat. So nasturtium flowers, violet flowers, all sorts of lovely plants you can eat and they're joy delicious, but there are others that you need to be careful of. Look at this beautiful daisy trapped in the top of an ice cube. You can make pictures like this, which means you have a flat area of water and you put your petals in it. So this is more of a work of art. You might not want to eat this one. 
In a previous inquiry, we looked at the idea of making ice bowls. And in an ice bowl, what you need are two bowls, one larger, one smaller, and you tape them together so they can't touch. And then you fill the middle bit with water, which then turns to ice, and you can put all sorts of things in between those two bowls to end up with these beautiful icy containers. Things that you might find useful when well, you're going to need the water and you're going to need your ice cube tray. If you want to try and explore bubbles, things like bicarbonate of soda, baking powders, you might find in your kitchen cabinet are really good for that. You want to find your fruit bowl and choose some things in there that you could put in and maybe some herbs to see how they taste when you put them into an ice cube. One of our big queries is whether or not it's possible to actually trap a smell inside an ice cube. Two that you might like to try, one is an orange or a satsuma and the other is a lemon because they've got quite strong smells. See how you get on and see if it's possible to make an ice cube that smells of something. All of the inquiries are about the idea of entrapment. It's about putting objects, any objects that you can find that you want to put inside ice. So trapping things in ice. What a wonderful day we're going to have. It's going to be a day of problem solving, of curiosity, of trying things out and seeing if we can find things that the ice will trap. What will a flower petal look like? Could we put a stick inside? Might there be a toy that you want to put inside some ice like a polar bear or something that loves to be cold? I look forward to hearing all about your brilliant ideas later on.